to be here, but also uh, for your industries and what you mean to small businesses throughout this country. Um, obviously, we've heard from the EPA, and uh, now we get an opportunity to, to hear from you. Uh, just one thing, let's, let's try to stay under that five-minute mark. Uh, read your testimony as fi fast as you possibly can, uh, but uh, because we're going to have votes in about 30 minutes, and that could last a long time, so we're going to try to get through this as quickly as we possibly can, ask questions as, po as fast as we can as well. So uh, without further ado, we're going to ask our next witnesses is uh, Dr. Craig Benson. Uh, Dr. Benson is the co-director of the Recycled Materials Resource Center in the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, the center serves as a research and outreach facility for the beneficiary use of recycled materials. Mr. Benson, you will be recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, glad to be invited here to provide my uh, input and my experience to your committee. Um, I want to make a few uh, points from my testimony that I think are particularly important. The uh, first one is that the uh, safe and wise beneficial use of coal combustion products is, is truly good for our environment. We create more durable and longer lasting infrastructure. Uh, as a result, we don't need to repair and replace things nearly as often. Uh, we really gain some significant uh, benefits as a result. There's just some calculations we've done in terms of energy usage, uh, savings on the order of 1.7 million households of energy usage each year. Uh, Thirty-one percent of the water use in California equivalent, uh, equivalent greenhouse gas reduction of nearly two million cars. These are really substantial beneficial impact or beneficial attributes that we get from using these materials in sustainable construction. And I would argue that given the pressing energy and climate issues that we're talking about today, that we ought to walk carefully when we make decisions about how we might affect that. Um, the second point I'd like to make is that we have been looking at this issue for nearly two decades of whether these materials are hazardous. And the materials that we're looking at today really are not different than the ones we've considered in the past to be non-hazardous. There really hasn't been a substantial change uh, in those materials. There's really not a uh, scientific reason to designate these materials as hazardous. Um, third point, and one of the issues of concern is that uh, the release of, of trace elements and other constituents from coal combustion products uh, used in uh, uh, reuse applications, things like arsenic and cadmium were mentioned earlier. One of the things that we need to realize is that all materials that we use in the environment release these things. And really what it gets down to is really safe and wise use of materials and engineering things properly uh, so that we can manage those releases to the environment in a way that protects the public. Um, we know when we use uh, uh, CCBs in uh, concrete-like application that those releases are, are essentially negligible, that that's a very safe and wise use. Our history has shown that uh, over and time and time again. Uh, fourth point, and I think this is a particularly important one, is that you know, 20 years I've been working in this industry interacting with people who use industrial byproducts in construction projects, people who actually put it into their infrastructure, who buy these products and, and assume responsibility for it being in their infrastructure, people like state highway departments, counties, public works directors, the people who buy that. And one of the key issues that we deal with in promoting the beneficial use of industrial byproducts is overcoming issues of perceived risk. People are concerned about the, the risk of using that product. And I would argue uh, that the designation of uh, these materials as a hazardous waste, even with an exemption uh, for beneficial use, will have a very significant impact on that perceived risk and will result in a significant reduction in the use of these materials in construction. I would argue as well that it's not only these materials that will be affected by that, but all the industrial byproducts that we use will be uh, affected adversely. One argument could be made if it's coal combustion products this year, what will it be next year? What, what is the use that I'm going to be concerned about? That perceived risk is very real. The stigma associated with the hazardous waste de designation is very real. Uh, and I, I consider that a major issue that we need to consider. Um, I would argue as well um, that we actually know how to manage these materials in a very safe and wise way, both in the beneficial use application and in the disposal application. In my home state of Wisconsin, We've been doing this for 20 years. We don't have environmental problems with our disposal facilities or with our reuse applications. Uh, rules like we have in Wisconsin can be applied nationwide 
that can be regulated either at the state or federal level and they can be very effective and i would argue that that type of example could be used to create some type of national rule or policy so i'll leave it at that point thank you